Good morning, folks. Justin from Tackle Tactics out on the water. An absolute cracker morning this morning. And today we are fishing one of the most versatile soft plastics that you can have in your river and estuary kit, and that is the Z-Man 2.5 inch slim swims. Fish on. Yep, yep, there he is, right in that patch of weed. Right where I thought he'd be. Yep, yep, there we go. Oh, that was pretty cool. That was cast up onto Right down the face of it. Yep, yep, perfect. That's where we wanted it. <clears throat> that water's rising up over this flat. Just a little brimbo to kick things off. That uh, water's rising up over the flats here. It's going to be a very big tide today, so the water's pumping fast. He's only a little guy to start with, but he was sitting right where he should have been. So that weed extends out and then it drops to a clean edge. So it's like a sheer weed edge and a sandy, muddy bottom. And those fish are patrolling and hunting right along there. There's not enough water for them to get up on the flat yet. So we're just going to pick this edge, see if we can find a few bigger ones. Was that a tap? Was that a tap? Felt like a tap. Yep, yep, there he is. Oh, oh that was a tarpon. Oh, he's still on there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, he's off. He bit me off, did he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice tarpon. That was uncool, biting me off. <laughs> oh, dude. All right, that's one of the cool things about fishing drains and flats sort of areas on that incoming tide. All sorts of species will push in after the bait. So that was a nice little tarpon. Unfortunately, when my 10 pound leader wasn't up to the task, he, he did a couple of nice jumps in the air, so that was cool. But then he bit me off, so I'm just retying again. Locked blood knot. I'm fishing a quarter ounce, just there's a fair bit of flow, so we want to keep, keep control of that plastic. So I'm just trying to lock blood knot. Lubricate that knot and just check it, make sure it's nice and solid. And that's a quarter ounce in a 1 0 in a TT Demons jig in green to match my plastic. This is a new colour, so we'll talk about him a bit more. But this two and a half inch slim swims has been super popular. There's nothing swims like it with this tail, so there's a ton of colours. We'll, we'll see if we can catch another fish and then we'll talk a bit more about colour. Yep, yep, there we go. Oh, that was pretty cool. That was cast up onto. You might be able to see the undulations in the water out there. There's a, a fair ripple across the top of the water. And what that is, is that's weed below the surface. So that weed below the surface, weed attracts bait, bait attracts fish. That's a bit better. That's a step up from our first one anyway. Not a giant, but that's a better brimbo. Look at that guy. That's a nice brim fishing the flats and edges. And that's on our new color that I was talking about earlier. So we might have a look at different Slim Swims colors. Because it's such a popular plastic, we've got a stack of colors in the range, but I'll just give you a bit of a quick guide on color selection for fishing on the day. So there you go, that's a nice brim. Picked up that 2.5 inch Slim Swims. So there you go, that's a, a bit of a step up from that first little brim that we got. It's always a good sign when there's a few brim around, means there's a bit of bait around a lot of the time. So hopefully a few other species in amongst them. We'll have a bit of a chat. I'll have a dig in my tackle bag here and we'll have a bit of a chat about color because color can make a big difference on the day. The Slim Swims is available in a ton of colors just because it is such a deadly little placky. So we'll get this guy off, send him back into the water. See you later, mate. And we'll talk about this new color and also a bit about color selection. All right, so we mentioned color. Color is very important when you are selecting a plastic and the conditions on the day may dictate your color selection. So for me, I love that two and a half inch slim swims purely because of the number of species that eat it. Everything from whiting, brim, flathead, jacks to bass, uh, even barra, giant herring, tarpon, lots of species will eat this tiny little bait fish because it's a great imitation of not just tiny bait, but jelly prawn profiles and those sorts of things as well. So. I generally operate off a three color theory, so I'll carry at least three different colors with me. I start off in my kit with a dark silhouette color. So a dark silhouette color is ideal when the water's dirty or it's low light conditions. Early morning, late arvo and that sort of thing, a dark profile is great, like a gold rush or a green pumpkin. And that provides a nice solid silhouette in the water that the fish can see easily, they can track it, 
and they can eat it. On the flip side of that, when the conditions are really clear and bright, especially for me in winter time, the water clears right up, the fish can get spooky and the bait is tiny and that sort of thing. So for me, that's when I, I utilize a light natural color. So that light natural color is good in bright conditions and also that really clear water. So especially something like that opening night, that's changed the day for me a lot of times when fishing the flats in winter time. Houdini is another nice naturally looking color. So we don't need that dark silhouette because the water is clear, the fish have got good visibility. If those aren't working, if we're not catching them on the dark profile or the lighter natural profile, that's when I'll swing into one of these guys. And this guy is often a favorite for people anyway, the UV reactive plastics. But these fluoros and UV reactive plastics are great for changing it up as well. If they're not on the natural colors, they're not on the dark colors, switch it up, show them something totally different and it'll often get the bite. Something like a space guppy has turned things around for me, especially it's a great dirty water color as well with that glitter and that in there. And then the oil family is always a great option in that dirty oil, blood oil, motor oil and midnight oil. So that's my other change up if you do need to change things up on the day. I know a lot of you fish that guy as a favorite. What is the new color that we've been talking about this morning? That is this guy, and he's a great all-rounder sort of hedge your bets option, I reckon. This, this is gudgeon. So gudgeon has a real nice natural bait fish look with some fleck, red fleck and black fleck and that sort of thing in there, but it also has UV reactive qualities to it. So it doesn't absolutely pop like the oil family of colors, which are fully UV, which sometimes I think can, be a, can spook fish a little bit, especially if the water's clear. So that gudgeon has that good combination of that UV reactive quality and also that real natural looking finish. So I think fresh and salt, that new gudgeon color is gonna be dynamite. So check that guy out. That's gudgeon two and a half inch slim swims, a new addition to the range. And that's what we're fishing with today on a couple of different jig heads. Let's get back into it. There we go, tap on the edge. On the light ahead, we've just moved to an, another flat area, looking for a bit more bait. And we're on a, doesn't feel like a big fella, but pretty cool, that's on that 1 8 ounce head. Gudgeon color and a 2.5 inch slimmy. So with the 1 8 ounce head, we're throwing it on the lighter gear. This is the one to three kilo combo. That's a nice brim, beautiful. You can see that 1 8 ounce head there, that's in the motor oil colour in a Headlocks Finesse UV. Turtle in front of us. And that gudgeon colour, the new gudgeon colour getting a few bites. So definitely not a trophy brim, but good fun on the flats, especially on light gear, on that 1 to 3 kilo gear. Chemically sharpened gamma hook found its mark. See you buddy, where's your mates? What are you? Oh, angry little fellow, whatever he is. Oh, Brimbo again on the flat. That water's pushed up on the flat now, so we've moved up onto the flat. And basically, all we're doing is covering water when we're fishing the flat. So the tide's pushing in, the wind's pushing us across. So we position ourselves on the outside of the flat and we let the tide push us back over it. That's a nice brim. That is a solid brim on the flat. There you go. On our gudgeon colour. 2.5 inch slim swims, giving that new colour a run. It's gone pretty well so far with the brim liking it. He doesn't want to settle down. Come on, mate. There you go. Nice handful of brim. Fishing the flats. Using that bit of a breeze there to throw a big long cast as, we, as it pushes it across the flats. Real nice silvery fish with that big tide pushing in. So you can see here, I've got a little bit of, as we've said in the past, a little bit of mayhem going on here, but I, I generally have a couple of rods on the go. So that allows me a couple of different jig head options. So even though I've got the same plastic on here, that two and a half inch in gudgeon, I've got a lighter spin combo and a two to four. So I've got a one to three and a two to four. And that allows me, I'm flicking two different jig head weights. And the reason for that is as we drift across the flat, we might come up on a bit of a sandbank, might come up to 60 centimeters or 80 centimeters of water. Then we'll drop down a little bit on the flat into a deeper depression on the flat that could be 1.2, 1.3 meters of water. So I might want to swap that jig head up based on what's coming up in front of me here. 
I'm through my sunnies, I can see the changing bottom and the sand and the weed. So I can change head weights to suit the depth. I can also change head weights to suit how the wind changes, how much tidal flow there is. And also just if I want to present the plastic differently. On that 1 8 ounce head, I can get it to fall more subtly and I can try that for a while with that subtle fall and flick and see if I can get some bites. If they're not firing, I can go to the heavier head and that heavier head will sink more aggressively, the tail will work more aggressively. So it just allows me to mix things up on the flats if I do have a couple of rods rigged. The other thing is if I do get into a patch of fish and I'll get bitten off or anything like that, I can quickly grab the other rod and fire another cast in there. So definitely handy having a couple of rods on the go when you are fishing the flats. Oh, that feels a bit better, that one. Hoo -hoo. That might be a grunter, maybe. Got a bit more weight behind it. Oh, come on, buddy. That was that long cast again. Today I'm lucky enough to be playing with a new reel here as well, the uh, Akuma ITX CB. It's a beautiful reel. Nice and light and smooth, and certainly did the job knocking over this guy. That's a nice grunter. Up on the flats. Beautiful silver or spotted grunter, javelin fish. That's on that quarter ounce head. So I was using the quarter that time to throw a big, long cast, get a bit further away from the boat, because the bites have been pretty subtle. They've been fairly finicky. So I just used that heavier head to get further from the boat and see if I could stir up something different, and it worked. We got ourselves that nice grunter. So that was the quarter ounce in the 1.0. So I'm using those painted jig heads. I like the painted jig heads for up on the flats. Uh, I've got that 1.8 ounce 1.0 in the headlocks finesse in the motor oil, and then I've got the green head on here. Both of those pair well with that new gudgeon colour that's getting our bites today. So that's the gudgeon 2.5 inch slim swims. There you go, so that's a nice legal grunter, spotted grunter on that Slimmy. We might keep that one guy for dinner. I told Cherry I'd keep a one for a feed, so that guy might go in the box. And then we'll release the rest that we catch across the flat here. Yep, yep, there he is, right in that patch of weed. Right where I thought he'd be. So that's a, uh, a cool thing to take note of when you are fishing these flats. That's prime terrain right there. So we drifted up into an area that was just predominantly sand. That's great, we love patches of sand, but when it becomes a giant patch of sand, it's generally less, holds less baits, less effective. So we actually move forward a bit there to there's a patch of weed here on my left and a patch of weed on my right. And that fish was sitting right in the patch of weed where he should have been. So that's where the bait, the prawns and the bait fish and that sort of thing will hold in the weed for cover. And these guys will come up into that weed to feed on that bait. So that is beautiful. Right on cue, right where he should have been sitting in the patch of weed up in amongst the sand. Another nice grunter. You can hear him grunting away there. That combo, that's a beautiful combo that I'm flicking there. That's the TT Black Mumba, two to four kilo. Perfect for delivering these quarter ounce heads. And the reel I've got on that is the new ITX CB, and that is absolutely beautiful. That thing is super smooth. Beautiful drag on it. It's lighter than the ITX, and it's got a stack of other features there as well, including that friction-free main shaft in there, that fluid main shaft. So that is beautiful. Cracker fish on that two to four kilo combo, quarter ounce head. All right, so that big long cast out there again, that fish again came from key structure on the flat. So, so that you know what we're talking about, we'll put the drone up in the air so you can have a bit of a bird's eye view. And we're gonna run that drone across the flat so you can see the sandy patches are the lighter colored areas and the weedy patches are the darker colored areas. And you'll see there's all sorts of different shaped patches of weed on the flat. And the key thing is moving around on the flat so that you're picking those pockets in between the weed in those sandy patches. Or if you're in a big sand area, make sure you're paying attention to those darker areas and those darker areas of the weed. So you'll see how expansive this flat is. It's a massive, massive area. And the key thing is just to use your tide and your wind to drift across all that structure, cover the flat, make note of where you get bites and where you catch fish. And it's just about all about covering water until you find the bite. Oh, 
I'll get that one out there as well. So another key thing to look for while you're in amongst looking for that structure on the flat, keep an eye out for bait fish. So you'll see bait flicking. If you see bait flicking, get a cast straight in there. But keep an eye out for those schools of bait and gar and different things that are on the flat because they're the, they're the signs that the fish may be there as well. If the bait's there, the fish are often there. And another giveaway is schools of mullet. So keep an eye out for mullet jumping. You might just see the odd single mullet jumping, but if you see a few mullet jumping, there could be a school of mullet in that area. If there's a school of mullet in that area, especially in spawning time, they produce eggs and lots of stuff going on. So there'll be lots of fish in amongst that school of mullet following it around. And that's where you also find a real mixed bag of predators like giant herring, uh, Trevally, Taylor, all sorts of things will follow those mullet around. But it's like we always say, find the bait, find the fish, and it, it definitely applies when you're on the flats as well. So if it's not happening, you can't find the bait, it might be worth moving to another flat. All right, what do we got? Little shift of location. Got a nice brimbo. Beautiful. So it's been a pretty fun little session on the flats. A few grunter, a few brimbos. Let's put him in the net. Yeah, that's been a great little session, fishing that two and a half inch slimmy in that new color, the gudgeon color. So that's gonna be a great color, whether you're fishing clean or dirty water, that gudgeon, that nice naturally sort of greeny color with that black and red fleck. And it's a UV color as well. So it's got that bit of UV pop to them that's gonna fire them up, especially when the water's dirty. So a good little session today, fishing across the flats. Hopefully a few tips in there for you guys to get you hooked up. Check out that Slim Swims if you want to get stuck into a few. And that new gudgeon colour is going to be a winner for sure. So all the best with the fishing. Get out there, fish on.